Hey there, Internet friends. Trevor Starkey here with another episode of TV Thursday. Uh, this week, I sat down and watched Wet Hot American Summer 10 Years Later, which came to Netflix this last weekend. Uh, if you saw Monday, I did a review of the original Wet Hot American Summer, kind of uh, uh, to go along with this review. And I mentioned in that review that I've never really been a huge fan of uh, kind of the 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 comedy of uh, Michael Showalter, David Wayne, Michael Ian Black, the the Stella group. Um, I enjoy a little, some of their stuff, but there's probably as many misses as there are hits. So I didn't really have uh, like a cult love of Wet Hot American Summer um, uh, or the the series that has that it has spawned. Um, I've watched them all now, um, but it it doesn't. It's not like required viewing for me. It was just it came to Netflix this last weekend, and I was like, eh, I'll throw it on, sure, why not? Um, and that's pretty much kind of where I walk, walked away from the this series from. Uh, it doesn't do anything overly, um, you know, uh, uh, offensive or anything like that, but at the same time, it, it didn't do much to endear me and, and give me, like, a a newfound appreciation of the other, the, the other series or the, the original movie. Um, I think kind of one of the – it's interesting because when Netflix originally announced that they were going to do a, uh, a, a series based on Wet, Amer Wet Hot American Summer, we kind of all thought that it would be the 10 years later that this series ended up being, but instead they kind of subverted expectations and gave us the first day of camp series, the last – the prequel series. Um, so it, I guess, makes sense that they're finally visiting it here with the 10 years later premise and storyline and, and, and characters returning. And I think one of the things that this suffers from, as uh, maybe kind of alluded to in the, in the movie review I did on Monday, is that a lot of the stars of the original movie have become much bigger stars uh, and, and don't necessarily have the time to jet away from their, their movie lifestyle to come and do a Netflix series. Um, Bradley Cooper, for example, doesn't even make an appearance in this one. It's kind of cleverly written around, and they, they make kind of a joke about maybe the fact that he's too big that he can't do Wet Hot American Summer stuff now. Um, but a lot of the, I think a lot of the, the story maybe suffers from the same kind of thing that plagued the, uh, the Netflix season of Arrested Development, where you've got this very ensemble uh, cast that, that thrives as an ensemble, but if you can't get all of those people together for like the full filming of the series and it's it is like okay these two people we're going to lock them away over here in this storyline and we're going to put these couple people over here in this storyline and we can shoot them you know months apart or whatever and we'll all edit it together or we're going to take this guy and he can be here for parts of it but we have to kind of write him off for entire episodes so we'll just throw him in a bunk and he's going to take a nap um, they have some clever approaches, but others, I think, um, just really didn't hit for me. Um, most notably, and I say this in the, in the written review, which you can read at the, uh, the link in the description below, um, Elizabeth Banks is, maybe she was filming Power Rangers when this was going on, I don't know, but she's like entirely, her entire subplot happens away from everybody else, and even when like there's a big kind of climactic moment uh, near the end of the series like she's very clearly doing all of her stuff on a different stage or different day or whatever compared to like everybody else in the core cast um, and they I mean they they like hide it through editing and stuff but it really looks like the only day she was really on set with the rest of the ensemble was when they kind of recreate the um, the, the sequence from the end of the original movie where it's 10 years later and you see them all kind of in, in early 90s garb uh, as opposed to the uh, 1981 outfits of the, the original film. So I think she is the biggest example of um, they couldn't, they had to really work around somebody's schedule um, and it doesn't really help the movie overall, I don't think. The sequel series here, 10 years later, also feels much more connected to um, the first day of camp series. Uh, and that might just be, you know, uh, in large part due to the, the similar format of a multi-episodic 
series as opposed to a movie. But I think they, I, I think both of the shows, the series, um, really kind of got away from some things that the the original movie did. Um, uh, one of the things I talk about in the in the movie review I talked about was the fact that there I had forgotten how many like kid moments were in the in the original movie as opposed to like the adults playing camper teen campers. Um, you had actual kids playing the the campers as well in uh, in the original movie, and there was a lot more of, like of them kind of acting like adults, and there was humor mind from that juxtaposition. And in both of the TV series or the Netflix series, um, you have a, a far fewer of those moments. There's really only like one probably kind of token kid in both series um, that that kind of stand out instead of like an entire group or entire subplots surrounding the kids. So uh, they really focus in both instances on like the the original you know, name fight camp firewood campers kind of coming back to camp here. And, you know, there's some hits and misses there. There are definitely some characters that got introduced in first day of camp that really just kind of fell flat for me. And when they return here, I was just kind of like, oh, them again. And unfortunately, I think they kind of also brought down my appreciation and they soured a couple of the characters that I enjoyed just fine um, from the series prior. But when they got paired up with some of those characters here I was like oh no don't like don't don't leave them with oh, boo I don't want to see that pairing I want to see that guy doing fun things with other people instead of the so uh, that was a little bit of a frustration and I think also maybe based around just availability in general they end up kind of comically bringing characters that got killed off even in uh, in the the first day of summer uh, series they bring them back from the dead to make appearances here uh, and again perhaps that was just to kind of offset the people that they couldn't get um, from the original stuff so uh, overall there's 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 still a lot to like here um, what ended up kind of hitting for me the most was a lot of like the the meta referential humor of uh, of the the show kind of like lines just being thrown about like oh yeah I'll see you in episode four or something like that um, David Hyde Pierce uh, when he kind of makes his little return appearance as uh, as Henry um, it uh, I like I was watching it and I was like is that is that what's what's going and then they just kind of really veered into some of the jokes that I was thinking in my head and uh, and it was just very funny to to see and it was probably my favorite moment of the show and I don't want to really spoil it but yeah it was that that was definitely what got me to laugh the most was was seeing David Hyde Pierce return and, and kind of how they used him and how they utilized him uh, here so uh, I think there was also like a weird maybe missed opportunity in uh, a couple characters that they kind of brought in just for this movie, for the or for this series, for the first time, they weren't in the movie, they weren't in the last series, but they kind of got like inserted into the storyline here as if they'd been around all along. Even going so far as to like digitally insert them in some of the the scenes from the movie, um, and that was uh, Mark Firestein and, and Sarah Burns. And I like I had hope for them kind of at the beginning. I was like, oh, that'll be a fun little you know thing that that the the team can play with. And ultimately, it kind of felt like it went nowhere, and they end up feeling more like they're there just to give um, one of the original campers, JJ, something to do. Uh, and and like while while every while everybody else is off doing their own subplots, he was kind of left alone, and so they threw him with with these two people and brought them in to give him something to do. Uh, and it just it, it just didn't hit for me. I felt I felt like it was a um, a missed opportunity there so those are those are a lot of my thoughts on wet hot american summer 10 years later uh ultimately if you if you're a fan of the wet hot american stuff i imagine there's still stuff for you to like here i don't have you know a deep affinity for the series so this didn't do anything really to move the needle one way or the other there are things i like there are things i didn't like uh just like with the movie and the prequel series so yeah uh overall it was, a, it was a fine time. I never felt like I was wasting my time watching it. 
Um, but at the same time, I'm not going to be like eager to really dive back into it anytime soon. So let me know what you thought about 10 years later, if you watched it or what you think about any of the Wet Hot American Summer uh, franchise as a whole. Uh, as always, I've been your host, Trevor Starkey from trevortrove.com. You can follow me at Snarky Starkey on Twitter. And until next time from here at the Trove, treasure your friends.